What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Dugout Episode 6. I am Cardinals fanatic AJ Caldwell, and that is the Yankees ride or die guy, Drew Zagrosi. Drew, how we living over there? We're living. You know, World Series baseball is here. Got a lot to talk about every episode. It is. As always, we will get right into these types of things. Drew and I's teams are both out of the playoffs. We have nothing really to talk about except just more baseball. But we're here for you guys. I mean, that's why we're here. Make sure to like and subscribe, rate and review the podcast. Look at all the shorts that we got going on on the Clutch Points YouTube channel. But let's just get right into it. We are getting into our feelings regarding some of the most historic things that we would want to experience for ourselves. Last week, you guys heard us talk about what pitcher we want to hit a home run off of. I would love to mash a home run off Clayton Kershaw. Drew, who is your guy? Mariano. Man, he went right after one of his favorite Yankees of all time. Didn't see that coming, so we'll see where we go in this way. Today, we're going to go over one batter that we would want to strike out. So, Drew, you and I are an ace on the mound or a closer. You can take your pick, whether you're a relief pitcher or a starting pitcher, and you get one batter in the history of baseball that you want to strike out. Who is it? For me personally, I'm going right after one of the World Series players right now, Alex Bregman. All right. Astro, of course, got to go. I'm, I could go after any Astro, to be honest with you. But um, something about him, he's just really cocky. Uh, the World Series, the 2019 World Series, where he carried his bat all the way to first base, and then Juan Soto did the same thing. That was great. But, um, yeah, there's something about that, uh, something about him, actually, and um, he's just really cocky. They act like the uh, whole cheating thing didn't really happen, I feel like, and um, I don't know. So I definitely, like, just – strike him out in the world series and like be hyped about it and have him get pretty pissed to be honest. But, uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm going right towards one of my rivals as well as a Cardinals fan. Give me Hunter Pence. I could not stand this guy during the Cardinals and giants playoff world, uh, playoff series when the giants would just clean house with us. I don't think we even got close one year. We we're up three, one on them and they came all the way back. Thanks in part to Hunter Pence and the famous video of him hitting the ball three times on a at bat. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Give me Hunter Pence to strike out, blow a fastball right up his chin and send him back to the dugout. That guy, he was, he was so animated in the batter's box. Drew it was like, it was annoying. I just wanted to tell him like, stand still, like stop <laughs> moving, bro. Like you're just, you're, you're scaring people. Yeah. So give me Hunter Pence. There was a lot of people on my mind, obviously, but Hunter Pence was so annoying, bro. Oh my gosh, he was so annoying. So give me Hunter Pence as the batter I want to strike out. For sure. Alrighty. Well, there you guys have it. Um, obviously, by no means are me and AJ uh, aces on the mound, but uh, there you have hey, it. Hey, we can dream, right? Yeah, we can dream. So <laughs> we're going to get right into our another, we're going to get into another top five segment this week. With the World Series going on, I feel like we had to do the top five Phillies of all time. So, yes, sir. To kick it off, we'll have AJ start with five, and he'll be taking over the number one spot as well. The Phillies are fun to talk about, Drew, because uh, we have a great history with them in the playoffs. Um, they've never been very good. So all these guys, when I talk about them, it brings back fond memories of uh, beating them in the playoffs or them collapsing in the playoffs. Of course, they had the 2008 World Series title. But, of course, with them being the World Series in 2022, we got to give them some more love. But number five, I only got six names on my list. You said you have five. Five, yep. So we're we're gonna we're gonna see where we go with this one. At number five, and this is tough, but I'm gonna go with Jimmy Rollins. Wow. Jimmy Rollins at number five, because the other four names I have on the list are some dudes, are some absolute ballers. Uh you're shocked, it looks like a little yeah. bit. Jimmy Rollins, uh he's got some great career stats with the Phillies. Let me just pull those up real quick. Um, Jimmy Rollins one of the, the best short tops in Philadelphia Phillies history. Um, but I can't put him any higher than all the other guys that will that will list, and maybe you won't list. But <laughs> yeah, uh, Jimmy Rollins in his career, um, he hit 267 um, as a Philly, 216 home runs, 887 RBIs. So not great, but still like a solid hitter um, for the Phillies. Give me him number five. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna have to put this player number four, just because, like you said, these other names can't put any higher. So. I'm going to go with uh, number four, Richie Ashburn. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, he was just a threat to pitchers, and he represented in four all-star games with the red pinstripes. So, 
give me him at number four. Did you know who he was before today? No. Not at all. That's my thing, bro. Is like I, I, I was wanting to do something like that, but it's like these other names, I feel like you can make a case in Philly's history. Um, but yeah, so we got I mean, Jimmy Rollins with Gasburn. Yeah, it's definitely different though, too. I mean, if it was the Yankees, it'd be different. Like I would know all these guys and you would know all the Cardinals guys like we've done. We've done both teams, but if it's a team you don't really like pay too much attention to, you're not gonna know a ton of these names. True. That's very true. Well, at number three. We got some big, big time names left on this list. Um, so I'm, I went back and forth between these two guys when you said Richie Ashburn. But at number three, I'm going to go with Ryan Howard. Okay. I'm going to put Ryan Howard number three. Um, one of the best first basemen of, of that generation. Mm-hmm. Think about the time period of time that he played in. I mean, to be one of the top first basemen in that generation was saying something. Um, he's a great, great player. Hit 258 with the Phillies. 382 home runs, almost 1,200 RBIs as a Philly. Um, so he was a great, great player. He hit 313 one season, bro, in 2006. So really? he was he was a menace. Um, so give me Ryan Howard, number three. All righty. Love it. So number two, I'm going with Steve Carlton. There you go. Okay. Yep. Greatest pitcher in Philly's history, winning two championships and four Cy Youngs. Got to put him in number two. Yep. Easy, and that makes this even easier for me. Number one, Mike Schmidt, one of the best third basemen of all time. Uh, my guy, Nolan Arenado, is, ke- is hopefully going to catch him this year with 10 straight gold gloves. Um, but Mike Schmidt was an absolute dude at third base. He was – talk about the hot corner, bro. Like, he invented the hot corner. Um, he, was, he was one of those guys that you did not want to hit the ball to. Um, so I think I believe he finished with 14 gold gloves in his career. Um. Uh. Let's see. Uh. Ten gold gloves. Sorry, and, and twelve All Star game appearances. Um. So Mike Schmidt, one of the best three basemen of all time. That concludes the top five Phillies in franchise history, according to me and Drew. Drew, where did you have Jimmy Rollins? You're, you're kind of shocked by that. I was gonna put him at three. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Who's your Who's your five? Uh. So Richie, Richie Ashburn at number five, then Robin Roberts at number four. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. We will continue to roll out these top five uh, for each team and let us know which team you guys want next. If there's a certain team you guys think that we should do next, make sure to let us know, obviously, in the comments. But now it's my favorite part of the show, Drew, because it's time to talk about some collapses. And the best part about this, I think, Drew, I was thinking about this today. The best part about these collapse segments is we will never talk about the Yankees or the Cardinals. <laughs> well, uh, that, yep. that there's, there's no way that that would ever come up. You can bring up all the things you want about the Yankees not winning a World Series, the Cardinals collapsing the playoffs. At least we make the playoffs. Um, so this is, a, this is a really fun one. Obviously, they've all been fun, um, especially when you bring up teams like the Cubs and the Pirates, and we're going to get into the Pirates in a future, future uh, episode. Fun one. Yeah. But that will be a really fun one. Um, today, you've heard Drew talk about it a little bit, people. It's the collapse of the Angels. Um, we're talking about the Los Angeles Angels and what in the world has happened since 2002. Uh, So for some background, uh, 2002, the Angels won the World Series in seven games uh, against the San Francisco Giants. If you guys remember that famous uh, clip that that has just gone viral on YouTube since it got posted of Barry Bonds being intentionally walked in a World Series game with the bases loaded, Uh, something you've never seen before in a World Series game, something that has rarely been seen since. Um, Barry Bonds also hit the furthest ball that anyone has ever seen hit in a World Series game. Uh, during that World Series. Since that point, uh, it's been rough for the Los Angeles Angels. Uh, They've made the playoffs. Uh, I actually did some research on this, Drew. I was surprised at how many times they made the playoffs since 2002. Um, Made it back to the ALCS a couple times. Um, So I'm just kind of building up all the the success stories of the Angels, only for me to just grab them and throw them in the mud. Um, The Angels made the ALCS twice since 2002. Um, they lost both times, uh, one in 2005 and the other one in 2009 um, to your, I believe, uh, New York Yankees. They lost in six um, when the Yankees won in 2000, 2009 or 2010. Um, so here's what's happened <laughs> since 2009 for the LA Angels. They've made the playoffs once. And the best part about this is the one time they made the playoffs, Drew, they won 98 games. They were the best team in baseball. They were the best team in baseball. Keep in mind, this is 2014. So that means you had Mike Trout, 
still in his prime. I believe Mike Trout's still in his prime in mm-hmm. 2022. Albert Pujols, three years removed from a World Series title uh, with the St. Louis Cardinals, so he's still in his prime. Josh Hamilton, who is basically coming out of his prime but still hit 30 bombs or whatever it was that year, they got swept. I mean, they swept off the floor by the Kansas City Royals. The Kansas City Royals were a great team, but you got swept as the best team in baseball going into the playoffs. Since that point, we don't know where they've gone. There is there is an APB out for the Los Angeles Angels franchise. Uh, people forget how many teams there are in California because the Angels are the ones you always forget about, um, unfortunately. But fortunately for us, we love talking about these collapses. So here's what's happened. The Angels have kept Mike Trout the entire time. Mike Trout's career has been wasted with the LA Angels. You think about all these players and all these teams in sports history that are great generational players. Barry Sanders with the Detroit Lions. Obviously, LeBron James on some Cavalier teams that were terrible. Mike Trout with the Angels might top top them all because he might be the greatest player of all time. Barry Sanders isn't the greatest NFL player of all time. LeBron James, if you've watched Michael Jordan play basketball, you know LeBron James isn't the best player of all time. Mike Trout's got a case to be the best baseball player ever. And he's nowhere to be seen because we forget about him and where he plays. Now you have Shohei Otani there as well. So you have potentially two of the top five greatest baseball players ever as a part of your franchise. Drew, they have gone 72 and 90, 26 and 34, 77 and 85, and 73 and 89. They've had zero winning records with Otani and Trout in the lineup. Zero. If that's not a collapse story, I don't know what is. You have two of the greatest people to ever carry a baseball bat, to ever put a baseball glove on, and you can't even have a winning record. That's how bad it has been for the Angels. They're they're one of the worst sports franchises uh, in recent memory. For me, personally, as as someone who's watched baseball and watched basketball and watched football, it's been bad for the LA Angels. And when you're in the same state as the LA Dodgers, when you're in the same state as the San Diego Padres, it is not looking any better. The future is not bright. Drew might bring up prospects. He might not bring up prospects. It doesn't matter who they have or who they don't have. You're supposed to make the playoffs. And in fact, you did in 2014, and you were gone before anyone could say hello. Uh, so it, it's been bad, Drew, for the Angels. Um, there's not any other way to slice it or put it. Um, I don't even need to get into, well, you know, they've had these stats and they're pitching. It doesn't matter. They've been awful. You, you can pull up all the stats and all you want to validate it, but the Angels have been bad. They've been terrible in an American League that is usually wide open every year. National League, you at least have some powerhouses. American League could be anybody any year. Yeah. And you've had zero winning records with Otani and Trout. It's ridiculous. It's, it's unbelievable. It's sad. But for us, it's a lot of fun because it's a collapse segment. The collapse of the Los Angeles Angels. Drew, what thoughts you got, bro? Yeah, I mean, I love the uh, the basketball analogy you brought up. Um, for me personally, it's like Carmelo Anthony. You know, no, you know, by no means is he the uh, greatest basketball player of all time, but dude definitely deserves a ring. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, I mean, Trout signed that extension in 2019. When's the last time the playoffs made the uh, or the uh, Angels made the playoffs? Exactly. So wasting money, wasting talent. Um, Otani signs another deal, one year deal. Um, yeah, I feel like if they don't get a like a ring soon, I mean, it's just gonna be a it's gonna be a waste of talent for both of those guys. So, got to figure something uh, out. Got to figure it out. We have no clue when they're gonna figure it out because you've had five years to figure this out. Um, and as Drew and I will get into in just a little bit, one of those guys may not even be there next year. So that's just a teaser for a little bit uh, what we're gonna be talking about. But Drew, tee us up for what we got next. Right. So. We're going to be doing something a little new every week. We want to do the uh, greatest position player of all time that we think. Um, so this week we're going to start with the outfield spot. And um, I'll go first, I guess. I'm going with uh, Barry Bonds. Yeah, Barry Bonds. Hey, so, interesting. Uh, yep. Uh, finished his career with 762 home runs. Come on. Come on. Um Eight gold gloves, and he's holding the uh, home run record of 73, which can be argued. Um, I definitely want to get into that with AJ one of these episodes. I would love to. Wait, so hold on. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. 
First of all, I got, I got two thoughts. First of all, this is the greatest outfitter of all time, and you picked someone who's historically been a DH. Yep. And two, and way more importantly, the greatest outfitter of all time is someone who used steroids? Yep. <laughs> Going with Barry Bonds. Drew, we're going to have to put a pin in that. We're going to have to come back to that in a that's future why, That's why we, yeah. need to, we need to get into who holds the, uh, the home runner. That might be the most outlandish thing you've said in six episodes. Love it. You chose you a don't... DH and a guy who used steroids. Yes, sir. Ah. Uh, I'm going to put a pin in that. Oh, my God. Wow. That is unbelievable. Well, you know where I'm going. Uh, I've talked about this guy a couple times. I can't stop talking about him. Greatest outfielder of all time and the man who ran baseball in the late 90s is Ken Griffey Jr. Um, One thing that we don't talk about a lot with Ken Griffey Jr. when we brought him up, we talk about, obviously, the shoe deal. We talk about, you know, the video game that Drew and I love, backyard baseball that he was a part of and all these deals that he had. You actually watch Ken Griffey Jr. play the outfield. He was a almost a better outfielder than he was a hitter. And that sounds kind of blasphemous to say. He was that good in the outfield. And so when you think about someone who is that good in the outfield and could swing the bat, Ken Griffey Jr. fits that description to a T. And you think about guys now, Ronald Acuna Jr., Juan Soto, guys that play the outfield and can swing the bat, they're only relevant because of a guy like Ken Griffey Jr. Um, so people forget that. I think we need to bring that aspect up. Ken Griffey Jr.'s value as an actual outfielder was so valuable. I mean, he robbed home runs, bro, like we had never seen before um, up until Mike Trout came into the league. So um, obviously, one of my favorite players, the reason I fell in love with baseball was because of Ken Griffey Jr., but his outfield skills were as good as his bat. Um, I think you need to make a case for that as the greatest outfielder of all time because he was an actual outfielder. So it works out. It works out. You pick one of the, basically the best defensive Outfielder of all time. I picked the best bet. Works out. I had to switch best it up. Bat I, knew, I knew you were going to pick him, so I, I was definitely going to switch it up because I was going to pick <laughs> him if you didn't. So best outfielder is sub- best hitting outfielder is subjective when you go with Barry Bonds, but that is for another time. Oh my word! I cannot believe you did that. That did that it. is. Whoo! He went there, ladies and gentlemen. He went there. We're 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 coming back to that. Don't you worry. All right, Drew, let's, uh, let's mellow the tone a little bit because we like talking about collapses. We like talking about, you know, making fun of other teams. You and I have had a rough postseason. Yeah. Yankees got swept. Cardinals got swept. But is that the darkest moment in each of our franchise's history? We're about to find out because Drew is about to give, in a moment, his biggest and darkest moment as a Yankee fan or just in Yankees history, you can pick either one and then I'll reciprocate with the Cardinals. Let's mellow the tone, Drew. Go ahead. So I went back in history just a little bit. Game four of the 2004 ALCS between the Red Sox and the Yankees. So this is kind of funny. Well, it's not really funny, but it ties into uh, this year with the Yankees like showing highlights. Uh, like I think it was Aaron Boone's idea, actually showing highlights of this to uh, the current Yankees players to give them motivation or something. I don't know. So game four, 2004 ALCS, Yankees are up 3-0 in this series. Easy money. They got this, you know. No, no. Bottom of the ninth, they're up 4-3 to three against the Red Sox. And it just seems like the everything went the Red Sox away in that inning. Um, Mariano, Rivera, the GOAT, the Sandman. Up on the mound, leadoff walk to, uh, I'm not sure, it was Roberts. Roberts steals first, Posada tries throwing him out, safe at second. Okay. Bill Miller hits right up the middle, runner scores, it's a tie game, and the Red Sox win that game 5-4, to four, and they obviously go on to the World Series, and they win the World Series. So that, to me, personally, is the worst Yankees moment of all time, just being up 3-0 and then losing four straight just i hate talking about it losing four straight to your rival what what was your initial reaction when you heard that aaron aaron boone junk that they used that i don't i really didn't know how to feel about it but now that like i'm thinking about it more it's just like what are you doing like i if i'm trying to put myself in the player's position so say like i'm on the team watching that um I'd probably just be like, why are we like watching this? Um, 
I don't know. I I feel like I'd want to like watch them winning the World Series. I feel like that'd be like hyping me up. Like, all right, let's go out there. Let's do this. Let's get twenty eight. No, but I don't. Wow. I don't. We talked about him last episode. Aaron Boone, dude. Mm. No, no. Eat him into the sun, dude. Yeah, please. Oh my word. So there you oh. have it. That's mine. I don't. I don't want to talk about mine either. It hurts. Um, it hurts. Yeah, I tried to go back in back in history. Before, before I was a Cardinals fan to see if there was any moment. And th- there were a couple. I mean, you think about uh, the out at first against the Royals that wasn't called when our pitcher covered the bag. Um, doesn't get him. That's all I remember from that call. It's like, I don't care, bro. He did get him. Um, but I'm going to go to when I was a Cardinals fan in 2014. Uh, NLCS, game five against the San Francisco Giants. And Michael Walker. Comes out of the bullpen, coming off an injury. Tell me if you've heard this before, Cardinal fans. And pitches to Travis Ishikawa Ooh. with runners on first and second. And the call from Joe Buck is ingrained into my skull. And I hate it. Because Travis Ishikawa hits a walk-off home run and the Giants win the pennant. Blah, 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 blah. I cried like a baby. Because here's the thing. 2011, we win the World Series. 2012, we're up 3-1 on the Giants and lose in the NLCS, lose three straight. 2013, we make the World Series, lose to the Red Sox. 2014, we're back in the NLCS. So it just seems like something's got to break for us, right, Drew? Something's got to break for us. Colton Wong hits a walk-off home run in game two. Things are going our way. Now we're down 3-1. Okay, it's all right. They were up th- we were up 3-1 and we blew it. Now they're going to be up 3-1 and they're going to blow it. Travis Ishikawa. Where is Travis Ishikawa? He's not a superstar. No. He's, he was a position player for the Giants. And he just cranks one into the river mm-hmm. to end our season. That was, that was a dark, dark moment. Because we haven't been the same since. We made the NLCS once since then and had no offense against the Washington Nationals. So it's been bad. That was our one chance to kind of like made the NLCS five straight years, bro. Five straight years. Something had to break for us, and it didn't. So that was, that was a dark moment. I, I cried, bro. You're, you're, you're going to hate me. You're going to hate me. So I'm doing a series for uh, Clutch Point uh, Social. No, you didn't, bro. Stop it. Best postseason, best postseason Stop, home bro. runs. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but. <laughs> Are you kidding? Me? Did you put that as the best one? No, no. There's no like top or anything, but um, that's just that's just one of them. Um, Barry Bonds and now this, bro. I want to walk off the set right now. I don't know if I'm I, I walk might off as well just be a Giants fan at this point, right? Just be a Giants fan, Drew. Might Aaron well. Judge already wants to go to the Giants, right? <laughs> exactly. That's the rumors. Exactly. Might as well just have to uh, transfer Golly, over. Bro. Get out of here, man. <laughs> hey, it's not it's not the f- number one spot. It's not the number one spot. I, that was a dark moment, bro. That I was bet. a really dark. moment. Travis Ishikawa, bro. That's what I was thinking. Probably, like, where where is this dude when I'm making it? But um, probably working somewhere in downtown San Francisco now. Yeah, maybe. Oh my gosh, what are we doing next, bro? Just there you get have it. out of it. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. we'll get out of all this. So, number six, uh, we're coming in with um a blockbuster signing. So this we're just gonna be like we're gonna be using our imagination here a little bit. I feel like so I'm gonna start. I think this is uh yeah. this is pretty good. So going this is gonna be like. Basically, three teams we're talking about here. So, the Dodgers are going to let Trey Turner walk. Okay. okay. The Cubs are going to sign Trey Turner. They need a shortstop. The Cubs you just gonna... hate me. You just hate me today. <laughs> the Cubs you just are... hate me. <laughs> the Cubs are going to sign Trey Turner. All right. All right. Uh, the Dodgers are going to swoop in, sign Carlos Correa. Oh, my gosh, bro. And then Mookie's going to get moved over to second, like we've heard about. And they're going to sign Aaron Judge as well because they just have un- un- unlimited amounts of money, it seems like. so. Stop, Stop bro. Why are <laughs> so you hating the Dodgers, me today? The Dodgers will potentially be the best team of all time at the beginning of next season if this, uh, this all goes through. Root, that's not happening, bro. Unlimited amounts of money. I could not believe how off the rails we've gone this, in this episode. What have you done, bro? No, I think the out of everything I said right there, the thing that makes sense the most is uh, Trey Turner walking and signing with the Cubs. Though. I feel like that can happen. 
Or they can get Carlos Correa. I mean, either way, that we'll see. I wasn't I wasn't gonna do this because I thought you were gonna come up with something sensible rather than <laughs> taking both my kneecaps with the Cubs and Dodgers. But now I'm gonna do it, Drew. Lay it on me. Aaron Judge isn't coming back. He's not gonna be a Yankee ever again. And I was thinking, what team would sign Aaron Judge? What team would go get him? And you know it's going to be, Drew. Who? Because they're missing one piece in the outfield with an already great infield of Francisco Lindor and Pete Alonso. Oh. Aaron Judge is going to sign with the New-, <laughs> the New York Mets. That hurts. That hurts. Because I was thinking, what team would he sign with? We hear all this talk about the Giants aren't going to be outbid. Yeah. Forget that, bro. Forget that. The Giants don't care that much about Aaron Judge. I can tell you that for a fact. You know who would? Who lives right in their backyard? Who's really salty about losing to the San Diego Padres? It's the New York Mets. And similar to a guy that you fell in love with, Drew, in Carlos Granderson, you, Aaron you, Judge is going to become your new least favorite player. You're owed that one. You, you can say it. You can say it. You're owed. When he sports the... Or I said... I said... <laughs> Curtis Granderson, not Carlos Granderson. Oh, I don't know who you, Carlos Granderson is. I don't know what you said, yeah. Curtis. <laughs> Aaron yeah. Judge is going to sign with the Mets. It's scary. Because Agreed. it can easily happen. You know, it, there's a good chance it could happen. And Can you imagine, bro? The, I don't the, think it'll actually happen. Would, the city would flip but... upside down. Like There would be like riots, I feel like. Would, bro, it'd be the new it'd be the new Babe Ruth deal, bro. Yeah. When yeah. Babe Ruth went from the Yankees to the Red Sox, like I won't everyone would forget about that if Aaron Judge signed with the Mets. Oh, time will tell. Time will tell. We gotta be saying the Red Sox, right? I don't know, dude. It's like the Mets might just be his worse. I don't really know. Oh wow. I play the Red Sox more, but like meeting Judge in the World Series if he's on the Mets, I mean. Mm-mm. The best need an outfielder. The best need an outfielder. Yeah, they do. They can go. (sighs) They can go get someone else. It took it took six episodes, ladies and gentlemen. But Drew and I are finally going after each other. This episode, (laughs) Drew took both my kneecaps, and I just took his soul. Yeah. Um. All right, let's lighten the mood a little bit because somebody help us if we don't. Um. We're going to go into something that we're going to get into week after week, which is a this or that. You guys have probably seen it on multiple YouTube channels, even with clutch points with the NBA and doing a this or that player picking based upon their stats, based upon their talent. We're going to now do it with baseball. And so I'm going to tee up Drew this week. He'll tee me up next week. Uh, And it's just off the cuff. Drew has no clue what players I'm going to bring up, what players I'm going to ask. Um, And I just want to get his initial thoughts. Drew, like one or two sentences to each each one, you just got to be right in your feelings and, and give it to me. Okay. Start out with a banger. Okay. Who is a better hitter? Jordan Alvarez or Shohei Otani? Jordan. Okay. I'm saying this okay. because we know what Jordan can do in the postseason. We don't know what Otani can do in the postseason. There you that's, go. That's there you pretty go. clear. That's, that, that's right up the alley. Um, let's yes, go sir. after the other Angels guy. Who is a better player, right? So both sides. Mike Trout or Ronald Acuna? Mm, okay. I'm going to go with Mike Trout, okay? Because he's potentially, potentially just the greatest player ever. I mean, he's, he's up there. But um, with that injury with Acuna when they won the World Series, I mean, wasn't really a part of that team too much. And um, I feel like he's, he's good. He's definitely good, but he can prove himself a little bit more, I feel like, so... Going with Mike Trout. Yep. He's, just I got Mike younger. Trout. He's younger, so I mean. Yeah, I got Mike Trout, but it's close. Yeah. It's super close. The, the gap is, is, is becoming less and less wide. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, this is, a, this is one I was looking forward to. Better closer. Okay. Ryan Helsley or Edwin Diaz? Oof. I'm going to go with Edwin Diaz. I'm going with Edwin Diaz. Go with the script, Drew. Just continue to go after me. That's okay. Um, I don't know. When every time he steps on that mound, it's it's pretty electric, and he's 
he's going to get a deal. He's going to get a deal this season. So I got to go with him. Yeah, I, I, I think Edwin Diaz is, is better right now than Ryan Helsley, too. But I just wanted, I just wanted to see if you'd actually hurt that. I have to give say, me something but, today, but yeah, apparently not. Um, better player. <clears throat> Nolan Arenado or Manny Machado. Oh, that's that's tough. Cause I don't want to hurt you, but uh, <laughs> I mean, you've been hurting me all day. Just say Manny. Manny Machado. <laughs> but what blows my mind? I made a video about this. Juan Soto's a Gold Glove finalist. Manny Machado is. <laughs> so, bro, that cracks me up. Padre fans were in like in the comments, just like, uh, why? <laughs> yeah, they were. Like, I'm a Padres Juan fan. Soto? I still don't like understand this, but yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. All right, I got one more. Better starting pitcher. Justin Verlander or Garrett Cole? Mm. I'm going with Verlander. Just because oh. of uh he's age 39. I mean, obviously with the recent game, let's we'll ignore that, but thing he had potentially the best season of his career, so at age 39. So Justin Verlander, Garrett Cole. Still a little bit more to prove in those Yankee pinstripes. He's very good. One of the Whoa. best pitchers in baseball, but Justin Verlander tops him there, I feel like. Garrett Cole's got more to prove? Just a little bit. I mean, blowing the Yankees wild card against the Red Bro. Sox, that hurt. When good. you're when you're a Yankee fan, it's gotta it's gotta be tough, bro. Yeah. Like that man's been lights out. We're ruthless. We're ruthless. This season was this season was definitely uh, better than his season before, but okay, okay. Well, there you go. That's that's this or that. Drew will team you up next week with some guys as well. Let us know your answers to those in the comments <clears throat> and why Drew will con- continue to go after me. Just go in the comments and, and ask that. Why are you Why are you going after AJ Drew? Like why Why are you doing that? Why are you taking his kneecaps? Go ahead, Drew. Uh, okay, so. We're going to end off this episode with a few debates. There's a lot of changes coming to uh, the MLB next season. And um, I'll let you talk about those because you seem pretty hyped about them. Bring us. Oh, I'm those. not hyped about them. I am. You I am outraged. Talk about them. Yeah. I am outraged about one of them. Um, the 2023 MLB rule changes. Okay. Let's talk about this for a second. There is going to be some major changes in the MLB next year. One of which being an electronic strike zone. Now, why do I bring that one up first? Because I actually agree with this one Mm -hmm. because it's been needing to happen for years. Okay. There are umpires just taking games away from players straight up calling balls, strikes and calling strikes balls. And more often than not calling a ball, a strike is the most egregious thing I've seen. A ball two feet outside the zone, a ball two feet under the zone being called a strike. It's like, are you blind? Like, I get it's coming 99, 100 miles an hour, yeah. but you're an umpire, bro. Like, do your job. Do your job. Um, so, the electronic strike zone, I think, is going to be great. They've used it in the minors this past season, and it worked out really well. Best part about this, Drew, is you can challenge a ball or strike once per at bat. What does that mean? You guys ever watch a tennis match? and a ball is in or out, if one of the tennis players or if the guy who's on the other side believes that it was in or out, he can actually challenge it, and then you can see if the ball was on the line or whatever. You can do the same thing in baseball next year, which is awesome. I love that. I just can't wait to see Bryce Harper being an umpire's face like, challenge it, challenge it. Yeah. I can't wait to see that kind of thing. So any thoughts on electronic strike zone, Drew? Yeah, we already saw a little bit about the uh, the challenging stuff with Jason Dominguez. That was pretty cool. Uh, up close yep. video on that, and he was right. It was a ball. So yep. that's pretty cool. Um, Angel Hernandez, he's screwed. So, I mean, I mean, I guess he's not, but. Um, bro, just, just saying that name, like, <laughs> rages baseball fans yeah, everywhere. Bro. Yeah, I'm sorry, don't guys. even need to give an explanation. Yeah, so there oh, you have it. That's, uh, I also agree with you. Definitely needed. Yeah. Definitely needed. Yeah, electronic strike zone. The next one. The next one is no shift. The shift is being taken away. Now, you can still position yourself up the middle or to the right or to the left. You just can't have left side of the infielders on the right side or right side of the infielders on the left side. So you can still be in double play depth. You can still play up the middle. 
it's not taking away everything, but it's just taking away the short right field junk that we're seeing that robs people of base hits. Again, initially, I was not for this. I was like, you're taking away basically double teaming in basketball. It's really dumb. I'm understanding more and more now why they're doing so. Um, a lot of guys are straight pull hitters that are just getting robbed of base hits every single time they're up to bat. Um, so this will allow defenders even, I think, Drew, to become more gold glove caliber, right? You have like guys who are at second base or shortstop that don't even have to move sometimes. Um, now you're going to have to actually move up the middle and move to the side and actually show your, your, your range, um, which I think will be good for baseball as well. Um, so yeah, no shift. I actually agree with, I think it's, I think it's a great thing. that's going to happen for baseball, become, make it more watchable, more hits, um, but also more great plays. Yeah. I mean, Derek Jeter, I mean, you're a Yankees fan. Like some of Derek Jeter's greatest plays is just regular infield depth, ball up the middle and Derek Jeter roams to his left, roams to his right, picks it up, jump throw, makes the play. Um, you don't see that a lot when guys are in the shift now. So I'm, uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. Yeah. The shift killed the Yankees a ton this year. So I'm with you on that. Sure. And, um, I wanted to bring up Joey Gallo, like, but he couldn't even get a hit <laughs> with the shift. So, I mean, but yeah, I'm with you there. <laughs> it didn't matter with Joey Gallo. Yeah. Um, and then we come to the final one. Okay, Drew, we come to the final one. And the final one is the flipping pitch clock. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you're watching this podcast, I would encourage you to pause right now because otherwise you're going to have no, you're going to have no clue why I'm about to flip out about this. The pitch clock is as follows. Every batter, if there's no one on base, this is laughable. You have 20 seconds to pitch the ball per, per at bat, 20 to 30 seconds. Okay. If there's nobody on base, if there are people on base, you have 15 seconds in between each pitch. Think about it. You throw a pitch, the catcher throws it back to your glove. You have 15 seconds to throw your next pitch. 15. If you don't meet that pitch clock requirement, it's an automatic ball. If the batter's not in the batter's box with eight seconds left, it's an automatic strike. Drew, are we in Little League again? <laughs> what is there a mercy rule now gonna do? Like are they going to shorten the fences? Are we going to play in Williamsport at the Lily League World Series? Like, what is next? You're taking away, in my opinion, one of the greatest environments in sports, which is playoff baseball and a close-up of the pitcher's face as he holds the ball for as long as he wants. You're taking that away yeah. because you want to make baseball more watchable. Listen, no shift. I get it. People need to get on base more. There needs to be more hits. It makes baseball more watchable. I get it. Giving a pitcher basically a, the chance to sprint back to the mound so he can throw a pitch yeah. is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, and you thought I was done. Oh, no. There's one more aspect to this, too. You can only pick off a runner. And I'm going to give an example of this <clears throat> afterwards. You can only pick off a runner twice per at bat. Twice. Think about a 10 to 12 pitch at bat. You can only pick off twice. During that at bat, if you pick off a third time, you can do, you can by all means do so. If you don't pick them off, they advance to the next base. Just a free pass. Like it's a four pitch walk. If Trey Turner's on first base, if you have the, one of the fastest runners, you have Jared Dyson or Jerron Dyson, whatever his name was, that was basically the Dave Roberts of world series teams. who basically steals bases. And he's on first base. You're trying to tell me. I am so end up about this. You're trying to tell me that a pitcher only gets two chances to pick him off? Two? And in that bat? Are you kidding me? It's ridiculous. It's, it's taking away one of the best parts of baseball. And it makes no sense. The shift I get. Okay, electronic strike zone. Yes, Angel Hernandez has screwed games. <laughs> You're forcing pitchers to run back to the mound and to pick when they're going to pick off a, a base stealer and basically say, you can steal second because I can't throw over there. This isn't Little League. We're not needing to handicap. You know, like in video games, Drew, where you handicap, put the handicap up, you put it on easy level. <laughs> I see no lies in what's going on here. 
This is aiding the, the batters way more than it's aiding the pitchers. And it's going to be costly. I, I have no clue what it's going to look like, but it's not going to be good. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, I'm with you. I feel like this is changing the game a little too much. Like you said, the shift I get, uh, the strike zone I get, but I feel like we're going to see pitchers' numbers go down a lot, actually. If they're going to be sprinting back and forth, I mean. But um, I feel like for hitters, it's going to be a lot more consistent. They're going to be getting more consistent at bats. But um, I want to see how it rolls out. I don't have too much of an opinion, but right now I'm not uh, I'm not really for it too much. I want to see how it works, basically. So, but... um. That amped you up. That was great. I love that. Drew, Drew, Drew's a lot more mellow with, with how he handles things than I do. But a pitch clock, really. Yeah, I don't We're know. putting a shot clock on pitchers, bro. A shot clock. Let's just call it what it is. It's a shot clock. Yeah, and I mean, picking, picking batters off or uh, people on a base, that's, that's, like, that's where it, I don't really like it. That's changing Two a little times, too much. Two times, bro. Two yeah. times. I don't, that's, yeah. Not too much of a fan of that makes no sense so let us know what you guys think about those things what your thoughts are on the 2023 rule changes drew first two games of the world series are in the books as we're recording this game one was a thriller uh yeah. it was great um the phillies came back from five nothing i put out a tweet uh these phillies kind of remind me the 2022 phillies remind me a lot of the 2011 cardinals um, crashed in the World Series as a late wild card team, and now they have this ascending third baseman. Sound familiar? They have a superstar hitter. Sound familiar? Like it fits the script. So the Phillies are kind of growing on me, even though they eliminated us. Um, but what was your thoughts? I'm really curious to hear this. As you're a Yankees fan, so you might be a little biased. What was your thoughts on the tweets surfacing about Framber Valdez mm. uh, after Game Two and the little uh, what was this? What was this, Drew? Was I wasn't surprised to start with. I wasn't surprised. You, you um, think you think you think something's going on? No. So I did, but then I saw another video. I mean, he's really fidgety. So like, they showed a video of the first game of the season of for him, and uh, he's yeah. just like really fidgety, touching his glove. But sketchy when he brought out another glove. I don't know if you saw that. He had two gloves he was oh. wearing the same game. So I don't know. I mean, we've seen them cheat before. Would it surprise they anyone? They would do it again, would they? That's what I'm thinking. Like, and how do you cover it up? The ump and the ump was only checking the one hand, his left hand, or whatever. So that's it's interesting. It's very interesting. I, I'm not going to say anything yet, but it's just interesting. Um, I, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. But you got you got the Phillies or the or Phillies or the Astros the rest of the way. Mm. Hoping the Phillies, but we've talked about this Astros team. They're too Bro. good, man. They're the Phillies haven't good. lost a game at home. I know that's the true. Have not lost a game that at stadium's home. gonna be insane. Like, oh my god, oh my god! Just can't wait for the uh, the emergency alerts for everyone across the United States of the power outages in Philadelphia during yeah. a during game three. So, wow, it's been fun that matchup was, so far. I'm not gonna lie. So it's been a fun matchup, and this was supposed to be a fun podcast. Um, <laughs> but today it was it was more of a a duel, but. Yeah. We've we've just scratched the surface, Drew. Oh, when you brought Barry Bonds and then you brought up Trey Turner to the Cubs. Mm. Aaron, it, Aaron Judge and Carlos Correa? Dude, unlimited money there in LA. I'm telling you. That's okay. Oh. They'll all... <laughs> hey, you know what'll happen though? We talked about this off camera. They'll go 130 and 32, yeah. Yeah. win 130 games, and they'll lose in the NLCS. <laughs> I love hating on the Dodgers, but that's just me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode six of The Dugout. As always, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment below on what are the next things we should talk about. We're rolling these things out every single week, and it's the off season. Come uh, two weeks from now, Drew, we got winter baseball meetings coming up soon. If the Cardinals don't break the piggy bank. I want to say this again to the camera. Please, please do something. Oh, for my sanity. You guys think I'm bad now. If the Cardinals do nothing and we sign Brandon Marsh in the outfield, I'm going to lose my mind. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Carlos Sonatic, AJ Caldwell. That is Yankees Rider, Die Guy, Drew Zagrosi. Uh, we will see you guys next episode. Thanks for listening. Peace out.